Well guys, what are we doing today? Well, we're gonna do something that I really don't enjoy doing. I'm actually going to do a bad review. So when I think of a bad review, it's just usually something where the bad points kind of outweigh the good points. So not to make it take longer, you guys know what time it is, turn down the volume. And let's listen to a little bit of music. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that are gonna say, oh, well, Mike, you give knives bad reviews all the time. No, a lot of times all I'm doing is pointing out points about a knife that just are things that I don't like. And 100%, this is still just today's video is based on my personal opinions. There's probably a lot of people that love this knife. Um, but this is that Shielded Knives Tronchidon. And for me, the negatives just kind of, there's more negatives to this knife than there are positives. Uh, so it includes price point, a bunch of other stuff. So, um, I don't necessarily, like, there's a lot of times that there are things about knives I don't like, like that, that there's a, there's been a couple Kaisers and stuff that came in that I didn't like the po uh, pocket clips, but if I replaced the pocket clip, that knife would be great. So like the Kaiser Lan, I loved everything about the knife, but the pocket clip. So in, in the weird turn of events, the pocket clip is one of the things about this knife I do like. So let's not make this take any longer. We'll get into some specs. We'll look at the knife overall, I'll give you all the specs, I'll give you the price, the weight and all those things. Um, and then, then we'll get into why I just don't think that this is a real great knife. So I'm not going to try and do it mixture bad style. We're just going to, we're just going to look at it and I'm going to tell you the points of use and things that I did with it and, and stuff like that. And some of the issues. So guys, let's turn it around and take a look at it from above. I accidentally, I accidentally hit the button. I was not trying to start. I accidentally hit the button and put my hand in my pocket. Hey guys, I actually just stuck my hand in my pocket while I was taking a, a drink of my coffee and uh, turned on the camera by accident as I was getting ready to come over here to do the top down. Now, so this is, and now let me do a little disclaimer. So when I, when I get these knives in, just so you guys know, um, I am not beholden to any company to give them a good review. This did not come from a company. This came from Jared over at Neves Knives, as do most of the knives. I've only had a few things come in um, from actual companies that was Artisan, and I forget who else gave me a knife for review. Um, so these are all based on my opinions, and it's just based on positives and negatives that I see based on some stuff. And I do the videos blindly at first, so that regardless of the cost of the knife and things like that, they all get a fair shake. So a $40 knife gets looked at the same way as a $300 knife. That way I'm not predisposed to make decisions based on price. So I just want to let you guys know this. This did not come from the company. So, but the fact is like, I try to try to make sure that if I do a video about a knife, even if it came from a company that I am objective and I don't, you know, I don't give it more or better reviews based on anything that the, because the company gave it to me for free. So just to get that out of the way. All right, so this is the Shield and Knives Tronchidon. Now, this is an 8.43 inch knife with a 3.66 inch flat ground modified. I'm, they, people are calling that reverse Tonto. I'm telling you, that's modified. This is a modified sheep's foot um, or modified Warncliffe. Uh, so, at any rate, it's a flat ground modified blade in Damascus. It is. It's listed as 9CR18MOV Damascus, 67 layers. So, it's that. What's that? is telling me is this is a core Damascus. You can see the core sticking out there. So the 9CR would be the edge. So I don't know what your clad or anything would be on that. Uh, blade thickness on this is 0.138. Let me grab my calipers real quick and the scale since I forgot to grab them. And I uh, will take a look at that and the behind the edge thickness. As always, I just went over and zeroed these out on my feeler gauges. So let's go ahead and take a look at the blade stock this thickness. Like I said, they have it listed as 0.138. Now I got these specs from several different places. 0.1385-ish. That's not too bad. Behind the edge thickness, I'm a little curious about it because this at first did not cut the way I thought. 0 0.030, it's not super thick behind the edge. We'll get into some of the issues with this in a little bit. So as far as the rest of the knife, you are looking at 
a 4.63 inch handle, closed link, 4.63 inches, black and green micarta scales. So this is layered black and, I'm sorry, not, not micarta, uh, G10, black and green G10, black and green layered G10. So that's why you're getting almost that carbon fiber effect. It has some really cool effects to it on the handle. It is a steel liner lock that runs on ceramic bearings and they have it listed at 5.59 ounces. So I saw that and I don't know if that's the actual weight, but we're gonna take a look at it because that seemed a little heavy to me. So on the scale, in ounces, they have it, like I said, they have it listed as 5.59, but okay, yeah, so it is five and a half ounces. That seems a little heavy for me. It's heavier than a lot of the knives I've reviewed lately. So in grams, for those of you that, well, let's go back and make sure that that was zeroed because it was still reading. Nope, five and a half ounces. In grams, you are looking at 156 grams. So not a really light knife. Let's get this out of the way. All right, so now let's get into it. So let's look at this knife overall. Let me tell you about the things I do like about this knife. It is very attractive. It is striking. I love the pocket clip. I'm not gonna lie, that is a long pocket clip, but it is in a position and fashion. I was afraid that this was gonna be one of those nightmare pocket clips that just drove me nuts, and it did not. I carried this. The tension on it is just really good. This actually is really nice because instead of having to fight it into your pocket, this basically just guides the material down into the pocket clip. Um, overall look at the blade and everything is great. The action on it is relatively smooth. It's nothing to write home about. I mean, it's not as good as some of the other knives I've handled. It has a very attractive look to it with a very broad, long, extremely striking blade with all that 67 layer Damascus with this with the 9CR core. Um, in hand, at first blush, does not feel too bad. It has a couple little hot spots, um, and one of them being here, but you have ample access to the liner. So, I mean, in all right there, that sounds good. It does have a lanyard hole if that's something you want. It is not enclosed in anything, so if you happen to be using a lanyard, you could catch it. Now, so those are the good points. Now, I want to remind you guys, this is all based on my opinion. So if you guys watched the, sh the, the cardboard cut test video I did about this, this knife has jimping everywhere. And I don't mean like soft jimping like you would see on, say, a Norseman, which is just about good. It's not real sharp, it's pretty good. I just grabbed that because it happened to be in my pocket. I knew it had some of the softer jimping. Um, the jimping on the flipper tab and everything is right there. Now, what that happens here is that is a big, big hot spot. If you're cutting, everything on this knife just feels hot. Where you put your thumb, it hurts. This, even though I've got, I'm, I'm not a weakling. I have got tough hands. I've worked my entire life. That is aggressive. Uh, reminds me a lot of jimping that are on some of the ADV knives that I just immediately, if I get an ADV that I own, these go on a scotch Bright wheel and they get taken off, which was what would happen with this if it was my knife. Um, another issue, this knife did not come sharp at all. It did not want to cut. So I did, the, I did a quick test edge on it. You guys remember me talking about that. I had left that spot back here, which was extremely low alone because all I wanted to do was put a test edge on it to see if it would hold, and it did not. So... Uh, I actually went back and resharpened this knife in its entirety. And if you look, I still have got a low spot here. I'm going to tell you why. I spent a lot of time and put a lot of effort. And you can see there's still a low spot there. This knife was very badly ground. And when I say I put a lot in, take a look at these pictures. I spent a lot of time trying to give this knife a fair shot. So as you saw, I was doing it and I'm sharpening and sharpening, and sharpening, and I re I basically resharpened this probably three times. And I realized I looked at I looked at how much time I had tied up in that. And I was like, D I'm not getting paid for this. This is not my knife. This is not a customer's knife. Why am I doing this? So that's when I just decided I'm giving it a, a, a poor at best review. I reprofiled, 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 and there is still a low spot. So you can see there, there's a let's zoom in on it. You can see there's a bad low spot there. There's a good bit of inconsistencies in the grind uh, where the where the grind on the blade itself is not consistent. And then that tip was very, very bad. And so I just stopped. That's why you're not seeing a good clean finished edge on this. I was like, you know what? I stopped. 
I'm, I'm not going to spend any more time doing that. So yeah, between all of those things and the fact it just does not cut as I had hoped, uh, my intention was I was going to like lay the angle back and see if it cut better. But after I saw how much it took to get that, you know, at the factory angle almost reprofiled and still did not even get it. it, I just was like, okay, that's enough. And then the last thing is this flipper tab is way too big. Uh, to quote, you know, the Nick Shabazz pocket pecker thing. In pocket and in hand, not so bothersome. It is a little bit of a hot spot when you get up, up, up on it and you're cutting because you have all of that there and all of that there. The issue with this is in sharpening, it gets in your way. Like if you're trying to get a good angle and say you've got your stone like this and you want to put a good – you want your, your, your micro serrations to go the way I like them, it gets in the way. It snap – it hits into stones and things like that. So – yeah, just there's so many things about this knife that could have been done better. And especially at the price point, I saw MSRP on this is $145. Guys, at $145, I should not have to do so much work to try and get the knife to cut. It should come, you know, at this point, you know, if you're paying, there are some really, really, really well-performing budget knives out there that are at the 40 and $50 mark that do so much better than this. And I hate to do this because this is a striking knife and I don't like giving knives bad reviews. But for me, this is a, this is a complete thumbs down. There are way too many bad points. I mean, basically the only things that this knife has going for it, it looks really cool and it has an all right pocket clip. So out of character, like I say, a lot of people think I just like to bag and dump on knives, but I don't. I would like every knife to be great. I love knives. It's what I'm passionate about. That's why this channel exists. And for me to do bad reviews is kind of out of character. So guys, it is what it is. If you like the knife, don't be offended. These are just my opinions. These might be things that like you guys don't. And if this was a, a knife you're going to carry and use in gloves a lot, th that all that sharp jimping would probably not bother you. But you know, most people are not carrying these and working and wearing gloves and doing mechanic work and stuff like that. So that's it, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, shield and knives. I mean, the 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 there's a lot of things about it, like at fit, like the fit up and and the build is good. It's just there's some minor things that really need to be addressed before this knife would be a go for me. So all right, guys, let's turn this around. Do some final thoughts. Yeah, guys, there it is. Just I, that's just a not a knife for me. I'm not even showing it in the outro because I just I kind of want to put it away and not think about like how, because I was really kind of excited about that knife and then just the disappointment set in. So that's why I do the dives the way I do. I do the blind first impressions, kind of first day in pocket. And then, then I look up specs and everything. And, and for me, the price point was what it was because I've seen it up to $145. The cheapest I saw it was 92. On average, it's about $96. White Mountain Knives had it for 96, 36, I believe. So you can find it different places on eBay and stuff like that. But at that price point, I should not have that many issues, especially the amount of time it took to fix the edge grind. So guys, that's pretty much it on this one. Uh, I love you all. Uh, if it's your, oh crap, Mike. That's it on this one. Uh, if you want to, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like the videos, give them a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. Um, if you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like I always say: like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. It helps push channels like mine, Jared's, Tri-State EDC, Big Red, Lefty, Nap Sergeant. It helps push us all up the algorithm. So follow, find the channels you like, and just like even if you're not going to watch the whole video, just drop a like. Um, other ways you can support the channel if you want to do it financially, I have a bunch of ways down below. First and foremost, I have the membership uh, link where you can get in on early access to videos, exclusive content, a lot of different uh, benefits based on tier, including $5 off per knife uh, on the sharpening service that I offer. Uh, other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links down below. Uh, anything you purchase with those affiliate links, I get a portion of it at checkout and it doesn't cost you anything. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. I've set you up a coupon code that works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. And that coupon cro code is Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, all one word. Crazy Sharp saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merch, I will put them in the videos. Jared, you need to send me a picture of you wearing the shirt you bought. Guys, that's it. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section if it's your birthday. Happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.